Hello, everyone. This is Martin Rooney, and welcome to the first episode of The Coach to Coach Show. And uh, if my voice is a little raspy right now, it's because I've been coaching all day, and I'm just returning from the school where I was coaching today, and I was so fired up, and I was talking to a couple of coaches on the way home, and I had an epiphany. You know, the the lightning bolt moment, if you will. And I said to myself, why am I just calling a couple of coaches after another really cool experience where I really learned some cool stuff? Why don't I talk to a lot of them? And uh, I was compelled right now to start what I'm gonna call a Facebook Live show. And I'm going to try to do this where we get an opportunity to interact. And what do I mean by that? I don't know if you know, but behind me, I have the Into the Roar podcast. I have a couple of different websites, trainingforwarriors.com and coachinggreatness.com, which have blogs and regular emails. And you may see my posts here on Facebook or social media, but it where do I interact? Like, where do we discuss or where do we come up with some great ideas together and build a world of better coaches, which is my mission. And I said, the perfect place is a Facebook Live and the perfect place is to get a regular opportunity going. So today, uh, if you're interested, hey, I'd love you to be part of it. I'm going to be asking you for things during it. But if you have a recommendation on perhaps the best time to do this, where I know right now for all my European friends, you're probably watching this and we missed you. You're all in bed. But my Australian friends, hey, you're just waking up. It might be uh, 9.30 or 10.30 in the morning where you are. But my West Coasters in the United States, man, it might still be a little early. You might still be at work. And I apologize. So I'm trying to find the the best opportunity because I'm on a mission to make better coaches around the globe, around the world. It's what I've been presenting on for the last number of years. It's what my organization, Training for Warriors, what I believe we're building are great coaches to help more people around the world. And every week I want to start the discussion and uh, I want to see what you think too. And I'm seeing a lot of uh, hey, some great names on there from people from all over the place. And I'm tr- going to try to uh, interact with you. And, and not only that, hey, thanks for everybody that's jumping on because I did not announce this. And it's almost amazing how many people will see it. But here's the question that I'm going to start with. And then, hey, I'd love for you to post your answers in here too. But then we're going to start a conversation. And look what I just said. I said, this coach to coach show is going to be designed to make better coaches. And why? Because I believe coaching is the most important job in the world. Now, we may have some doctors listening. We may have some lawyer list, lawyers listening. And hey, I apologize. Those are cool jobs too and they're important. But I think the word coach, there's a couple of things that come with that that make them different. Now, authority. Hey, when you're a doctor, you also have authority too. And, uh, and responsibility. Hey, when you're a doctor or a lawyer, you have a responsibility too. But accountability is very interesting. See, when a coach says something to you, because you call them your coach immediately, like, oh my gosh, this coach has told me something and then it must be true. And they're my coach. So it, it imprints in the steel of our mind. And I'm going to share an interesting story about that. You ready? Or about myself. I eat, and I want to see what you guys have as well. I eat a jar of peanut butter like every week, week and a half. I love peanut butter. I'll put peanut butter on almost any meal that I eat. But do you know why I eat it so much? I went to a hockey camp on the border of Canada when I was 12 years old. And the head coach, I cannot even remember his name. He was from Boston University at the time. And they had won some national titles. And he came in to talk to the kids. And he said, guys, you've got to follow good nutrition. And man, like the best food you could be eating is peanut butter. you got to eat peanut butter. It has protein. It's going to help you build muscle. It's got these extra calories you need to grow and get big. And and like I went home, I, I bought like a bunch of jars of probably not the best peanut butter, probably like Skippy with high rapeseed oil and uh, hydrogenated oil in it at the time. But uh, my peanut butter is a little better now. But here's the thing. I'm still eating peanut butter. I'm still eating peanut butter 30 plus years later because this guy I barely knew, but he was a coach. And because he was a coach, he all of a sudden had all this authority, responsibility and held me accountable because of that title. Now, I will say this. 
I've had a lot of doctors tell me stuff over the years. I don't remember it as well because maybe that title wasn't as revered for me as it is. But now let's talk about the mission. Now that we just identified that, that people, not only do they do a lot of times what coaches say, but they're listening. And now I want to share this. What if the coach says the wrong thing? What if the coach says you're nothing or you're never going to be good or, or you don't have it or you're ne- you, you just don't have the talent or, or the drive? Well, you know what? The person imprints that in the steel of their mind too. And uh, I'm challenging you right now. Hey, so write it in, in below if you get an opportunity because I want people to answer and I want to see these things so we can build and grow together. Hey, what's your peanut butter story, right? What was something a coach said to you 30 years ago and you're still doing? And uh, and And hey – in good things and then maybe what's something somebody said to you and you're still living or you're still believing and maybe it wasn't a good thing and that is why you're going to understand that I'm on a mission and I'm going to keep saying it to make a world of better coaches and uh hey next question right which I think is a really powerful one for everyone here uh Oh, there we go. Hey, so Bobby down in Texas, hey, never give up from his seventh grade football coach, right? So look at that. And uh, for everybody that knows, and Bobby, I know you're not in seventh grade or or you're not, you're not in 10th grade right now. Uh, Man, so that was a long time ago, right? Something somebody said that if they said the right thing at the right time, it could change your life. That's the power a coach has. And, uh, Hey, here's another epiphany and things that we're going to talk about always on the Coach to Coach show. You don't got to be a sports coach to be a coach. I mean, if you're a teacher, coworker, boss, spouse, parent, uh, 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 brother, sister, coworker, teammate, you're a coach. You're a coach to somebody else. And unfortunately, some of those bad stories that might be ringing with you now, right? Like, hey, did you have only good coaches? See, when I ask people in my audiences, when I say, hey, did you have a good coach? They say, yeah, I had a good coach, right? You'll see something like somebody told me never give up and I listened, right? And, uh, but then I'll say, hey, well, do you have a bad coach? Do you ever have somebody that said something that, man, really looking back, that was the worst thing they could have told you? Or somebody that didn't see your gifts inside or the things that you could become. Did you have one of those too? And usually people say, man, you know what? I had a whole lot more of those. And, uh, you know, and I see, hey, from Oz in Mexico right now, he's saying a coach told me that uh, I have to see people as they can be, not as they are right now. And uh, it's a rule for him now. And Oz is down in Chihuahua, Mexico. I always like saying that. And uh, so Oz, I hope all is well. And But here's the thing, like that power that a coach has, hey, that's for good or for bad. But here's what I'm going to tell everybody right now. Whether somebody did the wrong thing or said the wrong thing, you got to, one, let it go because I'm going to explain in a second why it's not, why maybe it wasn't their fault. But number two, right, now it's our opportunity to do something about it. And what do I mean? You can't repeat that mistake. You know how many people I see that they coach exactly like their coach coach them? You know, and I'll watch people today smashing young athletes or crushing people in the gym or something else. And it's like, well, that's what my coach did. That doesn't mean it's right. What's right is right. And here's what I'm going to say. Everybody is a coach. There have been good and bad ones. And that is maybe not their fault because there was an education that was lacking. There was a movement that was lacking. See, we know a coach is important, but guys, if somebody gives you a hat with the word coach on it and a whistle, you're a coach. Where was the education? Where was the ethics? Where was the rule book, handbook, if you will, of what it means to be a coach? And some important skills you got to have to be a great coach. And the reminder of how important your job is as a coach. And you know what? I got great news. You've probably heard. I wrote that handbook, I wrote that rule book, and uh, the biggest publishing house, one of them in the world, took note, and it is coming out. They have fast-tracked it. It's coming out in March, so we're only about six weeks away. It is called Coach to Coach, named after this show, and uh, I promise uh, it's only going to continue this conversation that we're going to keep having.
Uh, if you're interested in helping me out, you can check that book out on presale, by the way, at Amazon.com. And I'm giving some cool specials away if you've seen them on my social media. But I'll tell you what, I couldn't take it anymore. Right now, I'm returning from coaching at the high school where I coach. And uh, you know, it was one of the hardest things last year. Here's another story. One of the hardest things last year was to watch a lot of the kids on opposing teams that would come. And I might be working an event at a meet. And uh, and the kid, they had athletic ability. You could see it. But they had totally not been coached in the event in any way. Someone had not taken enough interest in them to teach them what to do. And then I'd even watch when they didn't perform well. That coach would come over and like berate them or yell at them or, or tell them something they're not good at. And you know what? I'm taking a stand. And here's my stand. The world needs better coaches, and I want everybody to accept this as a responsibility. You're a coach, and every time we see something bad on the news, every time we see another disaster that is you know, relying on something somebody did wrong, instead of saying, oh, let's look out all the things they did, or, or hey, every time I see on those news clippings, it'll be somebody that comes out and say, oh, we saw this coming. Oh, I, I knew this was going to happen. But I never see the interview with the person that, did everything they could in their ability with the coach that like took them aside and said, I see more in you and there's something possible. And man, I, you know why I don't see that interview? Because it didn't happen. Because there wasn't a coach there at the right time to make the right difference for the right person when they needed it most. And if everybody understood the job and if everybody understood that they have this job, whether you call yourself it or not, you are a coach. If you've got children, you're a coach. If you're a teacher, you're a coach. You run a business, you're a coach. You want a team, you coach other people. And if you understood that, that your words are gold and you could say something so important that could help somebody else, you're going to choose those words more wisely. And when someone's not doing well or you saw it coming, a great coach is going to step in there and... uh do something about it, right? And it's our responsibility. We cannot sit back any longer. And I'll tell you this, if when I just asked, did you have a good coach or a bad coach and you had a bunch of bad ones, you should be more motivated than anybody. Which leads me to my next coaching story. One that I have not told, but I want everybody to hear. And it's a good one. I grew up, I was a latchkey kid, right? What latchkey kid means is both of my parents worked. Hey, my mom was a physical education teacher. Uh, my dad ran businesses. And uh, so I, when I would get done with school, the bus would drop me off at this house where, you know, I guess it was the precursors to daycare. It wasn't like daycare. You just like went to somebody's house. I'm sure that breaks all the rules of daycare today. But I got stuffed into this house with a bunch of other kids. And I'll never forget, it was they had no TV, no nothing. And I can remember a lot of nights just, you know, waiting for my parents to show. And man, it was uh, like, as, for a high energy guy like me, if you know a high energy guy like me, cooping me up and locking me in a house with a bunch of kids that were all much younger than me, nightmare, right? And the only thing I had to look forward to there were a couple things. One was you got like these two cookies and I'll still never forget it. They were, they always gave you these like ginger something cookies that like were terrible. And every time I have one that ever tastes like it, I remember that place. And, but I had one other thing to look forward to. When the weather changed, because I was in this uh, prison, if you will, for a few years, when the weather got good up in New Jersey, we could go outside and across the street, there was a park and I'm gonna... I use that word lightly. I'm going to explain the park in a minute. But there was also our town Little League baseball fields. And uh, I would go across the street when they allowed us. And when I say park, I'm using the term loosely. They had a slide, but the slide was so covered in rust, you needed a tetanus shot every time you rode it. They had swings, but they were all busted up. But at least I was outside and I was running around. But, man, they had a baseball field. And, uh... In March, right around this time, coming up soon in the year, uh, the teams would start practicing, you know? And uh, if you know anything about me, man, I, I don't keep my mouth closed well. So I would go stand at the fence, at the fence, and I would yell, I can hit too. Hey, let me out there. I'll show you how it's done. I'm like, now in retrospect, I'm yelling to like some dad on the mound 
pitching to his 11 or 12 year old kid, but I was what my father likes to say, relentless, which I think, uh, you know, is one of my strengths, but I was relentless in my pursuit to the, Hey, let me take a couple cuts, you know, at the plate. And finally this dad can't take it any longer. And he says, uh, all right, kid, let's see what you can do. Right. And he calls me up, up to the plate and I'm small and man, the bats are heavy. So, but I at least knew enough to choke up and I know I got to, man, I got to take a good crack at this one. Now, Hey, I'm not selling my parents out. We played a lot of baseball. I knew what I was doing. And again, guys, at this point, you know, I'm a first grader. I'm like five, six years old. And, uh, cause I started school early and, uh, and man, he throws it and man, I rip one. I'm left-handed. I rip one and man, it just, just misses this guy. It just misses him. And he looks back and I'm just standing there with the bat on my shoulder. I'm like, yep. What? You, give me another one. What's next? And man, you know, I got my 10 swings, ran the bases. And you know what? That guy, he got me out of hell for one day. You know, that guy got me out of prison for one day. Let a kid take a few swings. And the story would be cool if it was just there, right? But here's where the story really gets great. A couple of nights later, late, 7, 38 p.m. or something, there's a knock at my door. Guy answer, my dad answers. And uh, it's that dad that was pitching me to baseballs. And he says, hey, can I talk to you for a second outside? And, and uh, the guy pulls my dad outside for about a half hour. And he says, hey, I'm, I'm one of the guys helps run the Little League down there. Uh, your kid came and hit some balls the other day. Kid can really play baseball. Hey, did you know? Did you know that your kid, he's like old enough to play t-ball. A, a six-year-old can go play t-ball and, and he can practice a few days a week. Get out of that place where he was. And uh, my dad said, no, I didn't know that. My dad, you know, he wasn't paying attention to that or anything like that. And uh, that guy who, by the way, went to the little daycare house I was at and found out where I lived and then went to my house. That was my first sport I ever got signed up for. Got me signed up for baseball. The next bunch of years, man, I fell in love with baseball. Baseball was my sport. If a lot of people don't know that, guys, I'm a huge baseball fan to this day because of that guy. But first part of the story. Hey, coach, do you got the guts to see somebody that is like having a hard time or something or they need something else and you go that extra mile, maybe just to throw them the 10 swings at the plate. Do you do that? Probably not. But then, hey man, are you going to go and show the guts to go ask some person who this kid is and then cold call them and knock on their door and and then a guy answers you don't know and show your expertise off and tell them what they need because you're helping somebody out. And you know what? I look back. And that dude, his name was Mr. Mobile. If anybody's listening from the Sayreville, New Jersey area, because I never found out whatever happened to him or anything else, I'm going to tell you there is one more caveat to the story. But what I'm saying is uh, this was just some dad helping out some kid because he did what was right. Now, I don't know the story whoever inspired him or what coach he had, but I guarantee he had a good one that made a difference in his life and did something about it. And if we had more guys like that out there, It'd be amazing because let me tell you the rest of the story. Every year, Memorial Day in Sayreville, New Jersey, we would walk down what was called Washington Road, which was our main drag. And you would you would pair up with your team in your uniforms and you would walk down the, the street with your team. And then when you got to the edge of the uh, to our park, you would you would take a picture with your team. That's where you did the team photos. And it was a Memorial Day. You were part of the parade, the fire trucks, the police uh, cars and sirens blasting. And every year, that guy, he'd be there. He'd still be coaching the team. Oh, by the way, he was never my coach. But every year he would see me because he accepted responsibility for me. He, he got me on that team. So I don't think he ever forgot. And he would always see me. And here's what he would say. He would say, hey, kid, I got you into this. You better do your best. And then he would say, don't you let me down. You hear that? He would say, don't you let me down, kid. And you know what? He was a coach. He was this guy. Actually, he wasn't a coach. He was a god. This was the guy that got me out of hell. This was the guy that did this incredible stuff for me. And you know what? Every time I swung that bat and every time I went to practice, I did it as I've done everything since then. 
I'd go all out. And you know what? I'll say this. On the diamond, I never let that guy down. And I don't even know if he was watching. But I made sure of it because a coach told me that. So, why did I not let him down? And uh, it's the final thing I'm going to talk about today. And I'm hoping you're enjoying this. If you're enjoying this stuff, here's what I want from you. I want you to write a quick story like in the, in the comments. I want to hear a story from somebody else, right? That was my story. Hey, you got a cool coaching story? You got something? Because when you tell it, you know what? I've never, I don't tell that one. And now that I'm telling it, it's like, oh my gosh, like, holy cow, the power that comes along with a coach and the importance that happens with a coach, especially in some young person's life. Holy cow, we need better rule books and we need more conversations about it and we need to understand what we're doing because we could make the greatest difference. And you know what? Not for nothing, we'd probably need a whole lot less doctors and lawyers if we got it right, right? So uh, not to say there's any, again, anything wrong with those professions, but if we had a world of better coaches, maybe we'd have healthier people. If we had a world of better coaches, maybe we wouldn't have so many disputes. And that one, because it supersedes that word coach. And remember, and coaches and lawyers are coaches too. So we're all coaches, but uh, I'm using that as an example. And uh, here's the last piece. And I think it's, uh, I want to share this one. But remember, what I said is, so share with me. Write something, uh, maybe a quick thing. Well, who was some coach in your life? Who was somebody that had a story like that? I gave you the peanut butter story. I gave you the, the, the guy that showed up at my house story. And both of those have had an impact in my life till today. 30, 40 years later, they, they drop this ripple into the pond of my life. And it's still rippling, right? This is the power we have. And again, I told you, I wrote a new book. And it's all about that power. And if we get enough people to read it, right? And I've got some of the biggest names in coaching behind it. I don't know if you saw, or I don't know if you saw, but if you're watching me on this, you probably know you have seen, but man, Dan Gable, Lou Holtz, Anson Dorrance, Philip Fulmer, Sean Johnson, Rudy from the movie Rudy saying it's a great story. And authors like John Gordon, Jeffrey Gittimer, and the list goes on. Wait till you see it. Phil Sims did the forward uh, Super Bowl MVP. But... um. The whole reason behind it, if this resonated with you today, that's what the book is about. And it's, it's guaranteed it's going to make better parents. It's going to make better teachers. It's going to make better spouses. It's going to make better coaches. And, uh, but it's only going to happen if we create a movement and we get enough people to hear about it. So, you know, hey, if you like this thing and every Wednesday I'm going to commit to doing one of these and have more stories for you, but I want to hear yours. So definitely you got to post in there. I want to hear what was a cool story of yours? What was something powerful? What was something you still remember because of some, what somebody said? What was a great story that somebody helped you? We're going to stay away from the bad ones. Guys, I don't want to hear about the bad stuff, right? Oh, this guy wrecked my career. This guy said the wrong thing. Hey, you know what? We're going to focus on the good stuff because what gets rewarded gets repeated. Every coach knows that. And uh, the last piece I'm going to talk about, and especially if you enjoyed this, share it with somebody or tell somebody about it. But uh, what is it, I say, the magic? I call it magic because it's stuff you can't see, right? Like, so what is it? that magically makes a coach have this influence, that magically makes a coach be able to say something and you remember it 30 or 40 years later when you can't even remember some of the teacher's names you had. And when I've crystallized it down, and we're gonna do this on every show, I'm gonna give you another word, another big word of what it's all about. The word I come down to is belief. And, it, and, and when I use that word, it's a two-way street. And let me explain. When you call somebody your coach, you immediately have this belief in them. You have this belief that they're in your best interests or they have something to tell you that can help. And what they say, you imprint it. it. It creates these neuronal connections. It's like, man, my coach said that. So it must be true because I believe him or her. But it goes deeper because I said it's a two-way street. They got to believe in you. But what I always say is, if you want to really be a great coach, you can't just rely on that. See, the bad coaches, they, they rely on that one. They believe me. I'm going to smash them. I'm going to say nasty things. I'm going to intimidate them. I'm going to say things negative and go for some negative motivation, which, by the way, few people today, because I'm on, you know, I, I, my feet are on, my boots are on the ground, baby, just like they were on the turf today and the track yesterday. Um, yeah, few people respond to that. That's that they write books about those people because they're unicorns, right? But 
The reason the great coach separates him or herself is because they believe in that person too. So never forget, if you want to have ultimate power as a coach and really imprint, you've got to prove to them first that you believe in them. You believe in what they want. You believe that it's going to happen. And then, man, they really not only believe in you, but, uh, but they'll, they'll do, you know, they'll do what you say and what it takes and make the sacrifice and show the discipline, uh, in order to make that happen. And that, if I were to say, if people ask me sometimes, how did you help with whether it was the gold medalists or great teams or state champions or national champions or world champs and certain stuff, how did you do it? Man, I just, I believed they were going to do it. And then they started believing it too. And I guarantee some of those great coaches that you should be thinking about now and smiling. And by the way, maybe writing them and thanking them. Maybe write them. See, I wish I could, you know, I, I wonder if that guy that helped me, you know, we're talking 40 something years ago and he was probably already older. I wonder if he's still around, but man, you know what? Yeah, that's a regret I have is I didn't get, I didn't get to thank that guy now that I understand it now being a coach. So don't make the same mistake I did. If you got a coach that helped you out and you haven't talked to that person in a while because it's such a thankless job, why don't you reach out to him after this too? And uh, might be the best thing you do today for you and them. So I'm looking for uh, your uh, your input. I'm looking for what you think. So give me some feedback. Did you, did you like this? Do you want to spend more time coach to coach like this? And if you do, man, I'm going to bring it every Wednesday and I'm trying to find the optimal time for it too. But what I'm hoping more than anything, guys, I, I don't want you to just be an information gatherer and listen. I want you to be an action taker and, and put some of this stuff into use. And the first part was just getting you first to know you're a coach. Your job is super important. You have the opportunity to make incredible impact and you could be a good one or a bad one. Let's make the, let, you know, think about the good ones you had and let's try to emulate that. And then each week I'm going to keep breaking it down deeper to figure out how we can make more happen. So I, again, it was my pleasure to present. I was compelled to take today to do this. And now, you know what I'm going to, I'm going to do it more because everybody that's listening, if I could do this and everybody has a better day tomorrow with somebody else, and then that was the day that person needed to, to hear it and they go on to have a great life as a result, then man, it, it was worth it for us to spend a little time coach to coach. So I am Martin Rooney. And uh, if you want to find out more, again, guys, if you, if you enjoyed this, I got a hundred episodes waiting for you on the Into the Roar podcast. Check that out wherever, wherever podcasts are found. If you like emails, you like reading too, uh, join my newsletters at either uh, coachinggreatness.com or trainingforwarriors.com. I'm always putting out information about that. You can always see my posts here on social media. And finally, if you, if you want to really help me out and really get the movement going, like I said, I've got a new book, Coach to Coach, coming out with Wiley Publishing. It is a, it's a parable, a coaching parable. And uh, I... I think it's going to be big, but it's only going to be big if everybody gets it and reads it. So I'm counting on you guys as coaches and then to let other coaches know, and it's going to rock. So next Wednesday, join me for the Coach to Coach show. You better bring some ammo because I want to see what you got. And I'm looking forward to reading all your comments below. So I want to hear good coach you had, something you learned, and a really cool story. And uh, I, I will be honored to read it. So this is Martin Rooney, Coach Martin Rooney. Uh, signing off. And man, I'm challenging you tomorrow, go coach with some veins in your neck and make sure you know whatever it is you're saying to somebody, they're putting it in here. So make sure you're saying the right things. Thanks.